three, two, one. It's the Puff and Steph Podcast. Hello, everybody. Thanks for being with us on this Tuesday. It's the Puff and Steph Podcast, uh, brought to you by Freisinger Hyundai, right on the price, right on the pike. Have pain, have anxiety, can't sleep. You can meet with a certified wellness consultant in American Shaman PA. Life is better with the feather. Hepishealth.com, as we talked about yesterday, Steph is on her... I think 47th vacation since we started this podcast. Uh, so once again, we bring in, I don't want to call the backup, <laughs> but we bring in Sammy. Hi, Sammy. Hi. What's up? I feel like I'm coming back off the bench. Like I was down in the injured yeah. list and now you just gotta we wait. can play again. Yeah, you just got to <laughs> wait for Steph to get injured and then you can come in. Don't worry, you'll get your chance. Yeah, Steph is uh, in Florida um, again. I don't know, just... Hey, I would be in Florida if I could, too. It's just funny how ever since we started this thing, one constant has remained on every single episode. Me. <laughs> well, it's because nobody else knows how to do that. 300, 370-something shows in. Congratulations. And I've been on all 370-something. Maybe that's why nobody listens. <laughs> People listen. Yeah, like 12. All right, uh... Anyway, uh, you and I got to spend some time together yesterday, and you were telling me a really funny story, and I wanted you to talk about it here. What? Why are you making that <laughs> You're face? You're going to make me talk about it? Um, I'm going to talk about your trip. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm oh. going to talk about your trip to Atlanta. Oh, that. And your your scooter story. Oh, okay. That's what I wanted you to talk about. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> we did we did cover a lot of subjects yesterday. But you could. No. Yeah, we could talk about that. Yes. So what was funny to me, you were talking about being in Atlanta and you had some time to kill because you're going to see a Atlanta Braves game. And it was a few hours before the game started. So you rented scooters. Actually, the scooter was the next day we had time to kill before the flight. So uh, six okay. hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we rented electric scooters. I can't really ride a bike well or... Why is that? I just, I just, I fall. I, I, I get injured. You're not, you don't, you don't have balance? But I like to do things. And I like to, you know, roller skate and I like to... But everything I do, I end up bleeding or bruised. Well, you have a nice, you have a gnarly one on your knee right now. Yeah, yeah. What's that one from? The scooter. Oh, okay. The electric scooter. So, one of the things that I was LOLing at yesterday when you were talking was the fact that you didn't realize the scooter had a brake. <laughs> I didn't look it over before I got You're on just it. Like, like, let's start this thing and go. Atlanta, here I come. I, I just want to throw this out there. It's completely sober. Riding the scooter because I'm assuming you could get a DUI on a scooter. Oh, sure, out there. you could. Um, but I was completely sober fighting with a scooter, and the scooter won. <laughs> I was outsmarted by a scooter. All right, so what happened? Like, the, you didn't realize the scooter had a brake on it, and like, explain what happened. So I didn't even know how to work it. And it was the first time I've ever seen these things. But you download an app, you pay per minute or whatever. Which is crazy expensive, right? 40 cents a minute. 40 cents a minute. Or maybe mile. It said I'm, I, I really don't know. But I'm pretty sure it was a minute. Because we didn't go that many miles. So, but anyway. So just start it. You have to like kickstart it. You know, get on like your skateboarding or regular scooter. Sure. And then you hit the throttle down. Nobody tells me this. I'm just... The, the guys I was with are already on it and down the street. And I'm wearing a dress. So this is just has to be funny to watch. But I hit the throttle and I was like, boom, here I go. I was like, oh, okay. But at first I kind of like jumped off, fell, but didn't fall, fall. So it's like, oh, okay. I think I got it now. And I got on and I was like, oh, and I'm good to go. All right. But every time I went to stop, they're like, because there's graffiti and we want to take pictures. So every time they want to stop, they're like, hey, stop. And I just would slow down the throttle or whatever. And sometimes I would just jump off of it because that was my go-to. I didn't know how to stop it. So that's how you stopped by jumping off. And where did you hold on to the scooter, like handles? Well, I tried, but that thing's kind of heavy and strong. And like the scooter went that way and I'd like tumble that way a little bit. Stumble, not tumble, but. And then, you know, a good 20 minutes into it, they're like, hey, you know, there's a break on it. Oh, there it is. On the handle, On right? The, handle. the thing you squeeze. Just, just like a bicycle. Just, right. That you. <sighs> wow. That I've rode a million times. Wow. They didn't have a how to ride. Well, maybe they did because there was like four pages of stuff you have to like accept and agree to. Right. Well, I didn't read it. And they just said, yeah. 
Maybe it was in there. <laughs> Maybe. It's just nice, you know, hanging out with you after not seeing you for a while. You just come back to that saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same. <laughs> uh, have you heard of micro-cheating before? Cheating, but only a little bit? Micro-cheating is a term for all the tiny ways you can be unfaithful without actually getting physical with someone. Micro-cheating is a series of seemingly small actions that indicate a person is emotionally or physically focused on someone outside their relationship, according to a dating expert. All right. Things like this. We want to know if Sammy... And I'll, be, I'll do it, too. Do we have a bell? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Has Sammy micro-cheated before? Do you always make an effort to look nice even if you know you're going to run into a certain person? No. I'm really good at just rolling out of bed and going wherever because I don't really care. Ever sent your ex a message reminding them of a good memory you share? So maybe. Or Facebook, you know, we'll send a picture. So, like, you'll tag an ex in a picture on Facebook? Like a like a time hop or something? I have to throw this part out there. I'm still friends with a lot of my exes. So I don't count that as micro-cheating. Do you have inside jokes or nicknames with someone other than your partner? Like everybody. Micro cheating. <laughs> a good no it says a good way to figure out whether something crosses the line is to think about how you'd feel if your partner was doing the same thing. Mm. If your partner found out you did, would you feel guilty? I don't like playing that game. You know? <laughs> so micro cheating. To be honest, yeah, I've probably done it. I don't think I've done it lately. And you don't do it intentionally to just probably to <sighs> I don't know, like I think in a way we all do things intentionally in some aspect. Sometimes we're ignorant to how it would make someone else feel. Mm -hmm. I think when you're looking at this, like the inside jokes or nicknames with your ex, um, cro finding out whether or not it crosses the line, you don't do it maliciously. My, nick my nicknames for my exes usually aren't like pet names. Right. No, I've heard them. You can't say them on this show. <laughs> Okay. Uh, two men broke into a Denny's restaurant in Evansville, Indiana around 2 a.m. last Wednesday. They really break in. Someone left the door open, but they headed to the restaurant's kitchen, cooked some eggs for themselves. After eating the food, they left the restaurant. And then about 45 minutes later, the men returned and started preparing another batch of eggs. At this point, a worker for Denny's arrived on the scene and confronted them. The two men reportedly left the restaurant. Police are still looking for them. Do they not have a kitchen? Maybe they didn't have eggs. That was their go-to. I mean, if you're going to be in any commercial kitchen, it can be a little intimidating, all the all the ingredients and mm -hmm. stuff. So what do you know? I know eggs. Okay, let's make eggs. If you were going to be stuck in a commercial kitchen, what do you think you would make? Do they have bacon? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, Denny's. whichever place I go, if they have bacon, I'm making bacon. Okay, so you're a bacon person? Yeah. I'm looking for the steaks. Although Denny's, not really not known for their steak, but I don't know probably not going for eggs that's like the cheapest thing you can get yeah especially like the scrambled eggs aren't even like real eggs they're like coming in a carton or i don't want to get into that <laughs> debate right now uh coming up in just a couple of minutes is this a side effect of the vaccine i haven't heard of this yet it's the puff and steph podcast Freisinger Hyundai, a refreshingly different car buying experience. Freisinger Hyundai dedicates itself to customer satisfaction. From the initial sale to the maintenance you'll need during the life of the vehicle, Freisinger Hyundai treats you like family. Check out their large selection of both the latest Hyundai lineup to certified pre-owned and used vehicles. Come see how Freisinger Hyundai drives the difference and tailors the purchase process to your needs. Right on the price, right on the pike. Freisinger Hyundai, 6115 Carlisle Pike Mechanicsburg, 717-766. 8422. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. 
Great news, everyone. American Shaman of PA's doors are back open for normal operations, and they're ready to bring you the much-needed relief that you've been waiting for. They care about their customers, and their customers keep coming back for more. Steve K says, American Shaman products drastically decrease my back pain and relieve my stress in just one month. Thank you. Stop by your local American Shaman of PA store for a free CBD sparkling water and free samples. Find their locations and more at HempusHealth.com. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy. No websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Now back to the Puff and Steph podcast. During the break, Sammy found like a Christmas tree pine needle on the desk. Steph. N- not shocking. Yeah. Steph and her yeah. Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I have yet to hear of this as a side effect for the vaccine. You know, you hear some things like you have pain in the arm or you're tired or you have some of like the COVID like symptoms if you get the vaccine. Never heard of this. 85 year old Italian man was fined not once but twice in less than an hour for breaking coronavirus lockdown laws to meet prostitutes. He insisted to cops that he had a uh, higher libido. In his his, uh, wording, shot through the roof. Good visual, by the way. Um, After getting the COVID-19 vaccine. So... Is Do we not know this? Is the vaccine made from Viagra? I don't know. The man was first stopped in early hours uh, in the morning after seen going into a camper van parked close to the beach, which is known to be used by ladies of the night. He was told he was in breach of COVID curfew regulations. He was fined about 500 bucks and he's released. But he was then stopped less than an hour later further along the road at another camper used by... These prostitutes find another 500 euros. He told police this COVID thing. It's just, it's doing things to me that I didn't think so. That's an expensive hooker. <laughs> That's a thousand dollars. And you didn't even. Well, that we know of. Yeah. Was he seen getting out or going in? Hold on. Well, either way, the, no, the find see, itself was a thousand. The first one he saw going into the camper. Mm, so no, he didn't get any yet. Um, he, and then the second time he just said that he was found at a camper. So maybe, just maybe he was able to complete his task that he would like to com- complete it. Um, 80 I, some years old, huh? Yeah. 85. I haven't heard about this being a side effect. I think this guy's making it up. I think it's one of those things where he was worried about doing that. Think about, think about how lonely a lot of us are d- during lockdown. We weren't able to see our friends, our family, our favorite hookers. So, so this guy, he finally got a shot. He's like, I'm good. So now I'm going to go and do the thing that I've been thinking about now for a year. Does he know you can still get other things? Like COVID shots don't protect you from gonorrhoeposyphilates. Right. Okay. So, Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, we don't know what he's doing. He's 85 years old. Do you think he cares if he gets herpes or not? You're he's, right. He's 85. Right. He's like, I don't have a lot of time left. Who cares if I die with syphilis? <laughs> I mean, let's be honest here. COVID didn't take him out, but syphilis <laughs> oh, Lord. He died COVID free, but he had a lot of other stuff. <laughs> COVID is changing the way we do everything. As a matter of fact, it's, it's canceling really long running sometimes prestigious traditions case in point running of the bulls in pamplona spain has been called off for the second year in a row because the bulls have COVID. yep every single bull has uh has been uh, found to have COVID. no uh the mayor uh cited the many coronavirus outbreaks a high occupancy rate in hospitals and a slow rollout of vaccines as reasons to call off the summer celebration now, Sammy, you 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 have uh, had a life of not so thought out. Yolo plans. Um, plans, sure. 
Have you ever wanted to run with the bulls? Um, I almost did by accident run with some bulls. No, 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 no. Number one, you're going to tell us that story. Number two, I mean the actual, did you ever want to go to so, Spain and run no, with the bulls? No, no. Okay. No, nothing good. They, they always have a video of somebody getting hurt. Yeah, and but I would be that somebody. The majority of people are fine. I would be that somebody. Like, and then look at this little blonde girl flying oh, through the air. Wow, that is, she got some air. <laughs> and now you want to know my story? Yes, I do. <laughs> In Puerto Rico, there's random animals just walking. There's probably more random animals than people on the streets at certain times. And driving back to the airport, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. You can't really see anything. And I noticed there's something white ahead. There's bulls crossing the street. I almost hit one. And then, of course, I'm like, oh, I kind of want to get out and pet them. But it's probably not a good idea. No. So you did it then? <laughs> I was this close. Okay. I, I, again, was sober, so I thought more clearly. I like how you have to preface... <laughs> Half your stories with you're sober, and then you still make drunk decisions. <laughs> just throw, I got nothing. Just I got, throwing I got, that I out there. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. But had I had a few drinks, I might have tried to ride it or run with it or pet it. I don't know. I'm good when they have the inflatable ones of these at the bar. Yes, those are fun. Yeah, but... I these like, were weird, and they were the real big ones, probably like the running of the bulls with the horns. Mm-hmm. And Yeah, no, I would definitely get hurt. Yeah, probably. I'm glad you didn't do that. I get hurt on the, the mechanical ones, so yeah. You get hurt on the scooter. Uh, Joshua Snavy, 36 years old, was arrested on Saturday for attempting to rob a bank of America in Alcala, Florida. Police said he approached the window. So have this mental picture in your head. Approached the window, read the letter to the teller as a prepared note saying, I'm here to rob the bank. Give me all the money. The teller looked to a co-worker who then activated the alarm. Did they have, like, the look? Yeah, like, this is... Yeah, I think they teach that in teller school. Like, <laughs> oh my god, she, her eyes are bucking out. She just blinked twice. That means hit the silent alarm. <laughs> <laughs> Robber! <laughs> Robber! Uh, anyway, uh, and then both tellers just calmly walked into the back of the bank and called the police. When officers arrived at the bank, they found that Snavely was still standing in the same spot. Just standing there, waiting for his money. Maybe they're just getting lunch. Be- wow, that must be a lot of money they're getting because it's taking them forever. I'm going to get so much money. This is going to be great. I'm confused. Why did he read the letter instead of just sliding it through? I don't know. It says he read the teller prepared note. Dear Mr. Teller or Mrs. Don't want to genderize. Dear Mr. or Mrs. Teller person. My name is Joshua (laughs) Snavely. I live at blah, blah, blah. I'm here to rob you. Give me all of your money and no one will get hurt. I will stand here patiently while you collect my money. Thank you. (laughs) Do they have his mug shut? No, they don't. Oh, darn. They don't. He must not have looked very intimidating. (laughs) I don't know. I think you can tell sometimes. Did I ever tell you my my bank or my getting robbed, getting mug story? I don't think so. Okay. So I had just had a very good weekend. I DJed twice. I got paid in cash twice. I had, and at the time I was making, you know, what we made at the radio station. (laughs) So I wasn't making any money. So this was like a big deal for me. This was going to pay for my car payment and car insurance. And I had that all in my, my back pocket. And I lived downtown Harrisburg and I decided to cut through like in this through some back alleys to get to the bank instead of going at 2 a.m. No, no, oh, no, no, oh, no, I no, no, no. After this, DJ, this was oh, the okay. middle of the night, so this oh. is like a Monday or Tuesday after a weekend oh, okay, gotcha. of DJing. Yeah, I think I DJed two or three times that weekend. I had I was rolling in it. <laughs> so a dude walked up to me. Now, 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 mind you, at any point in time in my life, I have no more than twenty to fifty dollars on me tops. Mm-hmm. But this time, I had a few hundred dollars on me. Of course. So this guy walks up to me and goes, hey, uh, I'm going to need all your money. (laughs) He said that. And I was like, and his hands were in his pockets. But it wasn't like in his pockets where he was making like that gun, you know, (laughs) you know, know, like the gun formation in his pocket. It was just, it was just came up to me and it's like casually Mm -hmm. like, hey, I'm going to need all your money. And I don't know what he thought I was and like, just like a chicken 
that would just like give him, okay, sir, don't hurt me. And I just went, I don't know what I was doing. All I knew is I had a few hundred dollars in my pocket. And I go, you got a gun? <laughs> and he goes, no. I think I do remember, right, remember this. this? No, yeah, yeah. Hey, you got a gun? He's like, no. I go, you got a knife? And he goes, no. And I go, all right, well, I'm going to go. <laughs> That's what I, I told do him. Remember, I do remember that. I felt like such a badass. But all what if he said yes? I don't know what I would do. I'm like, show me. What kind? Yeah. That's not a knife. That's not a knife. This is a knife. <laughs> no, like, I don't know what I would have done. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. That is a gun. Okay, here's my money, I guess. I guess. <laughs> I wonder if that's worked before for him or after. I mean, he wasn't large. Like, he wasn't any bigger than I was, so I, I don't know. Like, I just wasn't intimidated. And maybe and maybe if I had 50 bucks, he would have got it. But I had, like, so much money that no, I was... This is all my bill money. This is, yeah. I'm like, no, because I'll be walking everywhere because I'm going to repo my car. <laughs> Absolutely not. Can't have my money, hands in pockets guy. Next guy, I'm lie. Be like, yeah, I got a gun. And then maybe I would have done it with that. Show me. Show me your gun then. Prove it. I don't know. I, I, I like telling that story because it makes me sound like hard, but I was sweating bullets. I was like shaking all the way to the bank, get this money out of my hand. And he didn't follow you? And I never walked down that alley again. I now took the long way to the <laughs> bank, like on the major roads. Well, you learned. Good. I'm glad you're safe. I'm still shaking about it now, just thinking about it. Uh, coming up, who do you trust when you're talking about TV and movies? It's the Puff and Steph Podcast. Freisinger Hyundai, a refreshingly different car buying experience. Freisinger Hyundai dedicates itself to customer satisfaction. From the initial sale to the maintenance you'll need during the life of the vehicle, Freisinger Hyundai treats you like family. Check out their large selection of both the latest Hyundai lineup to certified pre-owned and used vehicles. Come see how Freisinger Hyundai drives the difference and tailors the purchase process to your needs. Right on the price, right on the pike. Freisinger Hyundai, 6115 Carlisle Pike Mechanicsburg, 717 766 8422. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Great news, everyone. American Shaman of PA's doors are back open for normal operations, and they're ready to bring you the much-needed relief that you've been waiting for. They care about their customers, and their customers keep coming back for more. Steve K says, American Shaman products drastically decrease my back pain and relieve my stress in just one month. Thank you. Stop by your local American Shaman of PA store for a free CBD sparkling water and free samples. Find their locations and more at HempusHealth.com. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy, no websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Now back to the Puff and Steph podcast. According to a survey, um, only 9% of pop culture viewers say they regularly listen to critics for advice. When you're, when you're trying to think of a, a TV or TV show or movie to watch, like on Netflix or something, does it, do you even look at like the Rotten Tomatoes Mm-mm. score? Is that something that you pay attention to? No, I'm my own person. I make my own mind up. Well, Rotten Tomatoes usually gives you two scores, right? They give you the critic score, and then they give you the viewer score. I, I, I tend to pay attention to the viewer score, because the critics, they're usually full they're of it. They're uppity. They're so uppity. Sometimes, so. Like, they're so freaking uppity. Like, give me, give me what people like me think, not people who are paid to be critics. Because they're the ones who, like, um... That stupid movie, uh, The Shape of Water. You ever heard of that? No. It's a movie. Okay, so like, there's like this fish monster person. This one, like, some Oscars. I'm not even joking. Um, this is really highly rated by critics, and it's like a woman 
who like hooks up with a fish monster person. Was he cute? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Yeah, Sammy. How, how many felonies did he have? Did he have a beard and tattoo? Uh, yeah. Did he have did a ton? Both? Did he have a ton of red flags? Because I would have done it too. Um, number one red flag. He's a giant fish monster. I don't judge. <laughs> I don't discriminate. <laughs> Uh, so, but yeah, that one, and I watched the first 20 minutes of it. I was like, this movie's awful. Why did I even bother with it? Well, there was another one on Netflix that everybody was talking about. Um, Tiger King. N- no, I watched that one. <laughs> I was intrigued. No, the one with the, with the, uh, the blindfold and the birds and oh, stuff. Oh, Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Was it Sandra Bullock? Yeah. What's, I forget Crap, the name. Yeah, I can't think of it. But everybody was talking about it. I was like, this is dumb. Tiger King? Yes. Oh, yeah, Tiger King all There's the way. There's tigers and amputees and, 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 yeah, and all kinds of animals. No, it's going to bother me. <sighs> Netflix. <laughs> You're Googling Monster it. Monster movie. Blind. Blind. Wasn't it Blind something? Or something blind? Blindside. No. No, <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, no. People are screaming right now. That is going to bother me if I don't figure it out. I didn't have anything to do with the word blind, now that I think about it. It's a Netflix movie. Did you Google that? Yeah, it's the one. It's, um, Bird Box? Yes. Yes. Because it had birds. Yeah, there's no way I would have got that right. Yeah. I was thinking, like, blind lady boat. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's not right. Because that's always the picture you see of that movie. Yeah. She's in a Sandra boat. Sandra Bullock. She's, 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 she's blindfolded. She's yeah. blindfolded. And she's in a boat. Blind lady boat. <laughs> no, bird box. I was way off. Not even close. Uh, yeah, so only 9% of people really care what critics have to say. Twice that many, 18%, say that they would rather go to or go with the opinion of a random commenter than a critic. When it comes to TV shows, Respondents say they prefer opinions of close friends or family members or even streaming platform algorithms. So they'll, they'd will they rather take what Netflix suggests to you than what a critic says. Well, yeah, because they go based off of what you've already watched. They know you. Five out of six people will, will explore other TV reviews online like Rotten Tomatoes. And uh, and look at what people have to say rather than critics. I barely read reviews on Amazon. When I'm buying things and spending my money, on I do that. See, that's one thing I, I abs- I've learned to I start. Doing absolutely, that. do pay attention to those stars. You don't necessarily have to read them, but if you're looking at two things, roughly the same amount of money, and one has two stars and one has four, go with the four. Go with the four. There's a reason that has four <laughs> stars, and there's a reason that that usually has two stars. And it's not because the makers of the four stars keep giving that thing <laughs> one. Uh, but yeah, I've. I've learned to be a little bit smarter with my money. I still buy terrible things I shouldn't buy, but at least I, at least they're nicer. <laughs> at least they don't break and they do what they're supposed to do, even if I don't need them. All right, time to stump Sammy. This is all about married couples and marriage, so you should do well at this. Yeah, because I'm so successful in my marriage. Uh, did you say marriages? I <laughs> did exactly. Point Nineteen percent of married couples bicker about this at least once a month. Nineteen percent. Of married couples bicker about this. Only once a month? At least once a month. 19%. And it's usually nothing either one of them did. It involves somebody else outside the marriage. In laws? Oh. Yeah? Nice. So you Good gave guess. it away with that laugh. Well, though. I have to, I, I give Steph hints too. Okay, all right. She does it more, so she knows she's getting better at asking the proper questions. So you, she used to just be like, TV remote! And she's like, no. <laughs> N- no. So she's getting better at asking questions and becoming a little detective. 27% of married couples will argue about this at least once a month. Their children? Nope. <laughs> Is it something like outside of the marriage again? Nope. Like not even it's either. usually something that involves both of them and their children. This is a big deal. A lot of couples fight over this. Bills. We'll go with that. <laughs> Monthly finances. Only 27 Only 20, 27% of married couples argue about this at least once a month. Once a month? That's a lot. All right. 37% of married couples argue about this at least once a month. How many percent? 37%. That now, this is way less important than finances, and it doesn't involve anyone else like in-laws. Cleaning around the house and chores and stuff? I think you're on the right track, but it's not that. 
like cleaning around the house really isn't that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. I would stay in that lane, like not very big of a deal thing. Mm. Dinner. What are we gonna cook for dinner? I'm just Nailed thinking it. of all the things that I've ever argued right. about. Right, and that's what it is. That, that's why this number's high, because it really doesn't mean a whole lot. So people, I think this is more of a... Where do you want to eat? I don't care, but you do care. Oh, yeah, you no, do I care. I'd be like, how about Chipotle? We just had that like three days ago. God, you're a moron. <laughs> so the numbers should be higher. It, I feel like yeah, God. yeah. I, th I think it's um, that's at least once a month. Okay. So the wife and I don't argue. This is what we normally do. This is no lie. Hey, I'm hungry. You want to order something? Yeah, where? I don't care. That's her saying I don't care. How about here? How about there? All right, let me think about it. And then all of a sudden it's 10 o'clock at night. We just go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and and you probably argue less because she doesn't eat meat and stuff. So yeah. you really just have to find a place that serves. Honestly, it's, it's a challenge because I love steak. I love steak. So... Like, obviously, we don't eat from steak. We don't order in from steakhouses. That's not the great. That's more of, like, going out to eat that mm -hmm. thing. But, like, it is tough because I do want to sometimes go to that place. Like, I would love to get seafood ordered in or something. Just not her thing. And some of these places don't have a lot of good vegetarian options. What do you mean you don't have cheese sticks? Didn't you order that the one time we went to dinner? You are like, I got to take some mozzarella sticks yep. home to the way. I have to. <laughs> She's a mozzarella stick vegetarian. That's what she is. <laughs> All right, friends, that is your Tuesday show. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll see you guys then. Later. It's the Puff and Steph Podcast.